Hey guys, welcome back to Cartooning with Paul. Today, I'm gonna show you how to draw Wally. -E. So come on, let's get started. Guys, I want to thank you so much for all of the requests you keep sending in. You guys want to know how to draw Wally. -E. So let's dive right on into it. All right, guys, so the first thing we need to remember is when drawing in Wally, -E, his body is a cube, right? So we're just going to draw in a... We're just going to draw in a... Um, that's enough of that. All right, so we're going to start over again. We're going to draw in a cube. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to... We're just going to draw it in nice and quickly here. If you really want to do a nice professional piece, you could use vanishing points to give it the proper perspective. Uh, but we're just going to throw this in as a tutorial for how to draw him in. So you want to remember this line needs to be parallel with this line, which it's it's not. So yeah, you know, let's fix that. Better to fix it now than later. Alright, it actually wasn't too far off, but it'll throw it off. So we're gonna draw in another line like this. And then make sure eh, just like that. So Nice like that. You want it to be somewhat parallel there. Okay, so there's your cube, right? So now what we gotta do is we gotta draw in his legs or the, the tire treads, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start, so I'm gonna draw in a small oval, just like that. Now, I'm going to draw in a bigger one, like that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw around it like that. And that'll give us the outer edge here. And I'm going to now draw in an oval right here. I'm going to connect this nice and round like that. And I'm going to keep this line parallel with this line. So these are the inside wheels to the tire treads. So now what I want to do is I want to make sure that it's parallel with this. So I'm going to draw a little line like that. And that'll help me figure out where that oval goes. Okay. I kind of want to make sure that they all line up. Just like that. Now I'm going to draw in this oval like this. And, yes, just like that. Okay. This oval like this. And now I'm going to connect it. Like, oh, like so. Okay, well, it's going to take some adjusting here. All right, and now I'm just going to continue it on the other side. And I'm gonna want to just lightly give myself a guide here. And we're going to give myself the same shape over here. And it goes up like that. Now, of course I'm eyeing this if I wanted a nice professional drawing, I'd be using the rulers big time, using my T-square, and I'd be measuring everything. But we're just going to go over the basic shapes here. All right, now that we've got that in, what we're going to do is we're going to just lightly separate some of these shapes up here on the top of his body here. So we've got some lines that go in like that, right? And that's gonna help me figure out where his neck comes out of. His neck 
come out of here like this. Shadow that in a little bit. And then we've got cylindrical shape in like that so that this shape will actually fit over it like that. A shape like this. Okay. And now that I've got that in, Let's throw in those cool eyes. Now his eyes are gonna be roughly about as wide as the body. So I'm just gonna mark here and here. And now I'm going to find a nice centered area there and I'm going to give a nice shape like this. So this top part is completely straight. It comes in like that. This part is straight right here for a little bit and then it curves up and in like that. We're gonna follow that shape. We're gonna reverse it on this side. I wanna keep them roughly the same length. Just like this, that's straight there for a little bit and then in like that now the eyes itself are camera lenses and they have to be completely rounded they are circles there's no way around that okay it's best to use stencils for this part um, if you don't have any uh, find something that you can trace And we're gonna we're gonna draw them over here a little bit. All right. Using a stencil though will make sure that they stay the same size. If you have a bottle cap or a coin, that will work just fine as long as it's the right size. May not be a bad idea to start with the circles just to make sure that you've got everything in proportion. All right, so we're gonna connect in here. We've got some gears and some some uh, widgets and things that are connecting everything together. And let's throw that in. We're gonna shade this in a little bit. And give it a little bit of aging here. I'm not gonna worry too much about that right now. We've got a lot of detail to throw in still. So I'm just gonna throw that in for now. But we have to remember that these eyes are a little deep. So I'm gonna make them three-dimensional like this. Okay, so now that we get that in, let's throw in a little bit of detail here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off really simply and then we'll see how detailed you really want to go. Okay, so we've got this shape here on the side of his body, like so. It's like a digital number seven. On the other side, it'll be like a... <laughs> Opposite of a digital number seven. Um... And now we're going to draw in this shape inside of that shape. And what this is, is that this is the track that Wally's arms are able to follow. Okay, and this is why, this is why using a ruler of measurements is really important. That way everything is parallel, like this is not. There we go. All right, there's a little circle back here. And now on the front panel, 
we're going to divide it in like this. So this is um, higher than halfway down the uh, down the center here, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're going to separate this into thirds, but the middle part is where the panels are, so that has to be wider, okay? And then that middle part will separate right down the center. He has a he has an LED readout here that gives you his battery life. And the battery readout is right here. This rectangle is black except for this like off yellow readout. So I'm just gonna shade that in a little bit. Okay, so now next to that, we've got these buttons. So we've got a big red button right here. It's nothing but a square. And then we've got what look like uh, buttons from an old remote control to your TV. And I'm talking like the ones from the 70s and 80s. Wow, you are old. And then what we'll do is we'll separate the yellow part like so. And then this is where we put the the Wally -E logo. Now I when they are over on the side, I usually start on the corner there and then I will measure out the letters. Uh, but this right here is pretty simple. So I know that the L goes here, L goes here, the A will go here like this, and the W will go like that. Now we can get back into this here. So if you want to go into the tire treads, you know, I'm just going to lightly give some indications of tread here. And it's up to you how much detail you want to throw in yours. You can continue throwing in more details, like another oval here, right? And then you've got some gears and things. Actually, that oval's bigger. Um, this can be enlarged a little bit. And then you've got all these gears and things that are inside here that keep all these wheels moving. But let's get into the main thing that we haven't drawn in yet, and those are Wally's arms. Now, the, um, the pose I'm going to be using is coming right out of um, some promotional material. So uh, that's going to have one arm kind of tucked in closely um, so one arm, we're only going to be seeing the forearm, which will have the caution lines here painted on, right? And then this one, so this is why I picked this. Uh, this one will show the other side of this arm and it's very cylindrical, right? It's so this side is the flat side, this side is the rounded side. And what we want to do is make sure that that's clearly cylindrical, just like that. And it's hollow inside here. And then what we do is we're going to draw in these rectangular shapes and they're on angles, just like that. And that's one finger. And you don't have to worry about both fingers being completely parallel to one another, although oftentimes they are. But sometimes when they're grabbing something, they need to they need to be able to move around a little bit, just as long as this line and this line are parallel, and this line and this line are parallel, as well as these. Because he is robotic, he is metallic, and you're not going to get any curvature out of them. So, there we go, we've got that in there like that. I'm just gonna shade that in a little bit for depth. Yeah. Now, um, it actually fits into this groove here that moves around. There's a, a, an upper part of the arm that you don't see in this drawing. But now we're going to draw in his hand on this side. And this side we're gonna tilt it a little bit. And I'm going to show you how to do it in a more simpler, quicker fashion. 
So we've got a square here on, a, on an angle. And we're going to separate it in half like that. Then we're going to have a rectangle on an angle, right? And then we'll separate that in half. And there you go. That is a nice quick way of drawing in Wally's hands. So we've got this part here that's rounded so that it can uh, move on an axis. And his hand actually has, it's like a wedge almost. It's rounded over here on this side, ever so slightly. We'll just give it some depth there. So with a drawing like Wally, because he has all of these parts, all these nuances, he has a lot of rust and aging and graining, you could just continue diving deeper and deeper into this character to give him all the detail that you want. Um, I gave you the springboard. It's time for you to take the leap and throw in as much detail as you can. Guys, if you like drawing this with me, please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you're aware of the next video when it drops. If you want to continue drawing with me, i got some videos right over here for you. Thank you again for drawing with me today, and until the next video, we'll see you later.